To be or not to be a fucking idiot is a question that does not get asked enough. To suggest that 100% of FDR's BS, objectively the most accomplished president in US history, accomplished nothing would require a lack of gray matter that even you, my dearly departed friend, have not yet accomplished. All right, kids, don't worry. I'm done with the soliloquy. On to the history. It never ceases to amaze me that certain historical revisionists will actually argue that FDR's policies did nothing to rescue us from the Great Depression or improve the economy, that the United States' entry into the Second World War is solely responsible for our economic recovery and our boom and stability through the 1950s and 60s. Obviously, it's common knowledge that being at war ensures a robust economy. That's why there was never any massive economic collapse in the middle of the 20 years we were at war in Iraq and Afghanistan. But despite the fact that it is incredibly baffling to me that anybody would continue to say this argument and expect anybody, including themselves, to believe it, in light of, you know, all of reality, their motivation to continue clinging to this ridiculous argument is a little less baffling. That's because FDR's New Deal is arguably the most progressive and most impactful policy that has ever been instituted in the history of our country. And if you admit the objective fact that these are the most lasting, positive, impactful economic policies our country has ever instituted, then you have to admit that your stupid conservative economic ideologies are, well, stupid. But I'm still cautiously optimistic that there might be a few people out there who believe this ridiculousness that may have just enough critical thinking power left to poke through the lead poisoning and see something resembling the light that they refuse to walk into. Looking at you, Mitch McConnell. For those unfamiliar with the New Deal, it was two massive economic and regulatory policy packages enacted between 1933 and 1939. They were designed to tackle the economic conditions of the Great Depression that were facing the nation and designed to put regulations in place to make sure that those economic conditions never arose again. To understand how we got ourselves into the Great Depression, to understand what policies do and don't work, we need to go back a little over a decade to the presidency of Woodrow Wilson. Now, Woodrow was a gigantic piece of shit, but he did have some pretty solid economic policies. His new freedom package instituted a federal income tax, instituted banking and business regulations, reformed tariffs, strengthened antitrust laws. It was a big progressive economic package. In no small part, his economic package gave rise to the Roaring Twenties, a time of massive economic growth and expansion. But because I'm convinced that Americans have a masochism kink and are absolutely determined to not have nice things, they're like, hey, since this is working so well, let's elect people who are going to do the opposite and see how that goes. And that's what they did, making the next three presidents Warren Harding, Calvin Coolidge, and Herbert Hoover. Harding and Coolidge spent the next eight years easing regulations on banks and businesses and stock market speculation and cutting the top marginal tax rate from 73% in 1921 to 24% in 1929. And these conservative economic economic policies worked so well that a massive housing bubble bursts in 1926 and complete economic meltdown happened in 1929. And then we elected Hoover because all of the previous policies were so fucked they got us into this mess why not keep trying more of them? Hoover imposed tariffs on agricultural products that sparked a trade war and slashed GDP by 15%. Now, doesn't that sound oddly familiar? But don't worry, unlike Trump's welfare farmers, these guys didn't get a bailout. In fact, Hoover vetoed every single bill that was designed to provide direct financial relief to working class citizens. Don't worry, though, he spent $2 billion to bail out the railroads and the banks that got us into this mess. <laughs> we're, we're caught in a loop, guys. Just all living in a... In a scratched CD, it just keeps skipping over the same part of the song. All in all, over Hoover's tenure, unemployment rose to 24%, which is ironically almost exactly the same percentage that GDP shrank by. So before we even spend a single second talking about FDR's policy, your argument's already fallen on its fucking face. The shitty policies you championed were so great they wouldn't have caused a recession and then turned that recession into a Great Depression. And it shouldn't be that fucking hazy for you people because we got a refresher on how all this shit works. Policies of financial deregulation and tax cuts for the wealthy are almost in indistinguishable in the run-up to the Great Depression and the Great Recession. And yet you people just keep fucking at it. You're like, you know that shit that got us into the Depression and the Recession and has never worked in the history of ever? anywhere? We should try that again. Just hear me out. I just don't think we did it bad enough the first time. We should do all that bad stuff that didn't work before, but we should just do do more of it. Got a real good feeling about it. This this is the time, guys. It's gonna be like a glorious, trickly golden shower in a Russian hotel. We just gotta just gotta try it one more time. It's fucking baffling to me that people's brains can take in that information and just be like, yep, 
Sounds logical to me. Anyway, on to FDR's policies. He gets into office in 1933, first 100 days. He's kicking ass, taking names, getting shit done. Passed the 1933 Banking Act, which included Glass-Steagall and heavily regulated the banking industry. Passed the Emergency Banking Act and started the FDIC, which opened the banks back up and stabilized the banking industry. Passed the Securities Act of 1933 and created the SEC to prevent another stock market crash. He passed a bunch of agricultural policy, including the FSA. He helped fix the Dust Bowl and stabilize food prices and production for both farmers and consumers. He got public works projects passed that created new jobs and infrastructure and long-term economic prosperity. In fact, without the Tennessee Valley Authority, half the jobs in the South wouldn't exist. They still probably wouldn't have electricity and their houses would get flooded out every spring. Created the National Labor Relations Act, strengthened unions, instituted minimum wage and social security, raised the top marginal income tax to 79%. And you say all of these things accomplished absolutely nothing. So let's look at the numbers. GDP growth went from negative 13% in 1932 to positive 13% in 1932. By 1937, unemployment had dropped over 10%. And all these policies, they were doing so bad, so awful that they re-elected him. So it seemed like the people who were living through it felt like his BS was, you know, accomplishing something. What was it that Alabama said in Song of the South? Mr. Roosevelt was gonna save us all. Daddy got a job with the TVA. He bought a washing machine and then a Chevrolet. I have yet to hear the song favorably mentioning Hoover telling people to get fucked. Now, to your point, the Second World War absolutely turbocharged U.S. economic recovery and growth. But that's still not the flex you think it is for the stupid argument because the policies around the war were still FDR's policies. Like the defense Defense Production Act, you know the thing that allowed the president to tell private businesses what they were going to make, how much they were going to make, when they were going to make it by, how much they could charge for it, and what they were going to pay their employees who built it. It also allowed the president to tell people how much sugar, coffee, meat, gasoline they were allowed to buy. In the 1940s, people weren't allowed to enjoy a Coca-Cola because its ingredients were needed for the greater good, but you're asked to put a mask on so you don't kill grandma and it's impeding your freedoms. In fact, 1941 to 1945, the U.S. basically was a planned economy. Hmm, what economic system utilizes a planned economy? Bueller? Bueller? I'll give you a hint, it's one of those isms you blame everything on. He also touted the Lend-Lease program as something that helped our economic recovery, which was also an FDR program. And why do I feel like it'd be a pretty solid financial investment to bet that you've got some real strong opinions on aid to Ukraine? Opinions that I'm sure the paradox of which, when compared to the Lend-Lease program, would make a robot's head explode. But you may want to tread lightly, because if you really want to argue that it wasn't New Deal policies that helped the economy, and instead World War II policies, well then you might as well get a hammer and sickle and call me comrade. And sorry, I know the video's getting long, but I'm not done with you yet. Because in the decades before the New Deal policies, unemployment was consistently in the teens, never really dropping below 6%. Since New Deal policies were instituted and unemployment fell below 10% in 1941, they've never hit double digits again, except for 1982 under Ronald Reagan. And from 1870 to 1929, economic growth averaged 1.73%. Since it's averaged about two and a quarter percent. The numbers don't lie. Also, it's 90 years later and I bet you aren't bitching about cash in your social security check every month. But hey, since my generation will probably never get anything out of it, we're more than happy to repeal that New Deal policy for you, if you like. I wonder, has a bank failure ever caused you to lose all of your money? No? Huh. I guess the FDIC isn't such a failed program after all, eh? And I'm sure you trust the Wall Street investors and hedge fund managers to manage your retirement account without any oversight, so we can get rid of that pesky SEC now any day. And since the TVA doesn't accomplish anything, I guess we should scrap that and go ahead and fire the 10,000 people it employs. Their jobs clearly have no positive economic impact, nor does the electricity they provide, the flood protection, or the agricultural products. Now, minimum wage isn't really accomplishing anything anymore because it hasn't been raised in damn near two fucking decades, but I'm sure you were happy it was there and livable when you started out, though I have a feeling your attitude has since changed to fuck them poor people. The list goes on. There is today still countless New Deal programs that affect the economy in positive ways and programs that were built on the foundation of the New Deal, like Medicare and Medicaid. On employment insurance, overtime, holiday pay. There is a literal century of history and data on how effective these programs have been and are. New Deal policies have accomplished more than you or any politician or policy you have ever supported in your entire life. And the only thing here that's 100% not accomplishing anything is the misfiring neurons that can't grasp that objective reality.